Okay, so our next talk today is Combining Proof Systems to Push the Limits of ZK by Kevin Jew at Succinct. Hey, so um, uh, my name is Kevin Jew and I'm an engineer at Succinct Labs. And today I will be talking about how we are combining proof systems to push the limits of ZK. So a quick background on Succinct. So we're interested in exploring the ZK application space beyond uh, the current main use cases. So um, mostly like, you know, ZK, EVM, uh, and like private, uh, private transfers using uh, projects like Tornado Cache. So as part of that exploration, we pioneered um, ZK light clients. And what that is is that we, we are verifying consensus protocols efficiently in um, the EVM. So uh, here's kind of an illustrative example of what we're doing. Um, we are taking, uh, so we are basically uh, uh, building a, uh, we have a circuit that proves that um, uh, that verifies consensus, so specifically the Ethereum light client consensus, and then uh, the generated proof is then verified on um, an execution chain uh, that is EVM compatible. So um, basically what that does, uh, enables is that this proof kind of attests that um, like these following headers are all valid. So here's a quick uh, overview of our architecture. Um, so the inputs into our prover is basically uh, basically the artifacts of the Ethereum consensus protocol. Um, so that includes like the aggregated signature, uh, the block headers um, that are mined, and the current validator set. Um, so that is all inputted into the prover. And then what is outputted is uh, the generated proof of, um, again, attesting that uh, the, the block header is valid and the number of signatures. So um, uh, that protocol is is uh, is earlier this uh, this year was um, released live on mainnet and it can be um, is accessible uh, right now. Um, so this enables a number of different use cases. Uh, so one of them is uh, basically sending arbitrary messages from Ethereum to any of our existing destination chains. Um, uh, and uh, with that, we can also uh, we also enable. Um, calling remote functions on Ethereum to, again, any of the, any of the destination chains. Another use case is um, on these destination chains, uh, any smart contract can read uh, the full Ethereum state. So it's essentially like an Ethereum uh, data oracle. And another use case is um, uh, that we are bringing the, con the consensus data um, onto uh, the execution layer. Um, so this is, in a sense, like a consensus data data oracle. And again, this is because we're um, using a snark to verify the light client protocol. This um, this has the security of that that protocol. So um, we don't want to just stop at uh, Ethereum. Um, we are uh, very, uh, very much actively working on other consensus protocols. Um, so the ones that we're working on is, is Tendermint, which is um, uh, it's, uh, used uh, mainly in Cosmos, as well as Grandpa and Babe consensus. And that is used uh, within the substrate SDK, which is um, uh, the SDK that that's Polkadot is using. And eventually, we plan to um, uh, do full Ethereum consensus. Um, so right now, we are just doing the, the light uh, Ethereum light client consensus. Um, but once we uh, complete full Ethereum consensus, it will provide even more security. So, um, so all of these consensus protocols have uh, like very, very similar um, uh, a very similar like primitives that they have to deal with. Um, so, so one of them is you know obviously verifying signatures. Uh, another is uh, is calculating hashes of block headers, um, and then decoding like individual fields within the header. 
um, and, and the general like pseudocode for all of these like consensus verification algorithms is like you know verifying the signature and making sure that at least like a quorum or like a two thirds of the validators have signed, um, proving the validator transition function, um, and then generally uh, doing like Merkle proofs to uh, approve like committed data uh, within the header. So. In this talk, um, I'm going to talk about how we are super supercharging zk circuits to handle consensus protocols with a hundred, like over a hundred thousand validators. And here's a kind of quick outline of the um, of the techniques that we're using, um, and then I'm going to touch a little bit at the end about um, some of our open source repos. All right, so. So verify, verifying validator signatures and hashes is 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 embarrassing, embarrassingly repetitive, repetitive, and imperilizable. Um, so basically, you know, these comp like uh, when, when we're verifying a number of like like signatures, there's really no dependencies uh, among this like um, set of computation. Um, the thing though is that circuit-based proof systems don't really take advantage of this kind of neat structure of this workload. Uh, so we asked if we can do um, if we can do this any better. So through that thought process, um, we are thinking of bringing uh, the SIMD computation, computational model. Um, and what SIM, SIMD stands for is single instruction, multiple data. Um, and and this computation model is, is actually already you know widely used in existing like devices. So like you know AVX instructions and GP, GPUs. Um, but basically, it is uh, doing you know computation on uh, like doing computation on data that is very much independent and and doing the same like computation on on each on pieces each pieces of that data. So to kind of try to implement this one uh, this this computational model, we we believe that Starks um, is it's a good like underlying proof system for it. Um, and the reason is, you know, is Starks have a single state transition function over a set of registers. Um, and, and that generally makes it much more lightweight to prove and, and has uh, faster proven times than Planck, um, especially, for, again, for this kind of repeated like structure. Um, so we figured out a way to arithmetize these constraints within the Stark um, and have built an uh, like a abstraction that is very similar to, to SIMD. And basically, it is computing the, the, the same function over, um, over independent inputs, you know, x, y, and then like the computing the result uh, y1 to, uh, to, to, to yn. So here's kind of an a illustration of one of our existing Stark circuits. Um, so what, what this is doing is doing uh, 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 basically, a number of um, so 256 uh, to be exact of um, of scalar multiplication, um, which you know it's it's basically the most like expensive operation for signature verification. Uh, so um, so basically, every row here you can think of it as a batch of rows of of 256 rows, um, and what we're doing here is that we are um, taking like like the elliptical curve point. Um, uh, and then you're sending it to the first row of every batch. Then we are doing a bit composition of each scalar, um, and then that's that that co bit copy decomposition is then put into one of the rows um, of, of this, you know, of 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 the uh, oh, sorry, it's one of the columns uh, in in this in this matrix. Um, and then that uh, so that bit decomposition essentially is going to act like as like a selector column. So um, as we kind of iterate down, that we're 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 basically doing a double and add, and then like, um, and then that selector will kind of determine whether when when we want to do the double. Uh, so in addition to that, we have um, I guess on the very right hand side um, accumulator column. So what this is doing is that it will take the results of each one of the um, the scalar moles. Uh, basically, you know, it will be at, at kind of, at, I guess, at the last row of the batch, um, uh, at, at the last row of, e you know, each batch, and then we'll take some randomness and then, you know, multiply it with the, with the calculated result and then, you know, sum, sum them all up. And then at the very last row of this, um, of this trace matrix, we will then uh, do the same 
um, accumulation with like witnessed expected uh, scalar mold results, and then you know, and then uh, do the um, uh, constraint to verify that they both match. So, um, so we have some benchmarks on on this one uh, specific circuit. Um, so, uh, so we are able to verify 80 signatures. Uh, sorry, 256 signatures in 80 seconds, and which that amounts to about like 300 milliseconds per per signature. Um, and given some comparison to some other uh, proof um, proof systems that we're, that we're using. Uh, so, uh, so for Planck 2 and Gnarc, they're somewhat similar, around 17 and 14 uh, seconds. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it goes to show that, like, this dark base approach is like an order of magnitude faster. So, we can also enable even more um, parallelization. Uh, so, where let's say we have like a fleet of machines in you know in this in the leaf of this one like tree diagram, and each of them are, is doing is running that one like stark proof generation that, that I just talked about. Um, and then we can then aggregate all the, all the proofs using something like, you know, Plonky2 with its, you know, fast, like, uh, uh, recursive, like, proof support. Um, so we can just aggregate them in this kind of tree structure, uh, which will produce a final proof saying that, like, the, the whole, you know, the whole, like, large batch of, um, of signatures are all valid. Uh, but so one thing about like versus friendly proof systems is that they're not like that um, EVM friendly, and you know the main reason is because of the the, the Fry protocol that they use, um, uh, and you know which would just generally make like verification of that like pretty expensive on the um, uh, uh, you know within a smart contract. So um, to solve this, uh, you know we'll, we're using uh, recursive proofs again. Uh, but in this case, what we're doing is that uh, we've we've actually built a Groth 16 um, circuit uh, using GNARK um, that will verify um, Planck 2 proofs, right? So we're essentially, um, I guess, in, like converting much of that you know Fry computation into more into uh, uh, into um, you know easy pairing operations, basically, uh, which will then have like um, we can just utilize like the Ethereum's. Uh, pairing and precompiles when when verifying the, verifying the proofs. Yeah, so um, I mean, I, th I think this is a great example of us using proof composition, uh, where you know we're using Starks, Planck Fry, and Planck KZG to essentially um, you know enable fast proving, fast recursion, and cheap EVM verification. So um, here's a kind of a concrete example of one of the uh, proof generation pipelines that we currently have. Um, so here in the first step, um, which we kind of call like the application specific circuit, um, is where like a lot of the, um, uh, well, you know, application specific like, like logic that is, like circuit logic that's implemented. So for example, like the, the, the Tendermint consensus verifier or the grandpa consensus verifier. Um, and then once that is generated, or once the proof is generated, then we can feed, we, we feed it into a Planck 2 recursive circuit, which um, essentially kind of normalizes these proofs. So what that means is that it will generate proofs that are, that are all the same size and then all using the same custom gates. Um, and then that is then fed into our GNARC recursive circuit, um, which will then uh, verify these, uh, the, the, um, these Planck 2 proofs. Um, yeah, so, so that is uh, one of the, like, like I said, one of the existing um, pipelines that we have for, for our proof generation. And here's some, some benchmarking. Uh, so for the Planck 2 recursive circuit, uh, we were able to get that to be about, you know, 1.5 seconds, um, you know, witness gen plus proof gen. And for the Gross 16 recursive circuit, we are getting, we are, um, we're getting like speeds of about like 25 seconds for, you know, witness gen plus proof gen. And so one other, like, I guess like trick, you know, up our sleeve is that um, because we are generating these proofs for many different types of consensus protocols, uh, we, we plan to aggregate them all into one proof um, so that when we actually go ahead and like, um, verify them on the EVM, it, uh, you know, 
it will be much cheaper. Like for uh, yeah, so, so you know, so normally it's like like around like 300k gas to verify one proof, but now that you know we'll be able to do it for many many proofs. Um, so you know, we'll get this kind of like nice amortized effect. Um, yeah, and then you know, like I said, like you know, we're moving, using many different types of uh, you know proof techniques and uh, kind of composing them all together. Um, in terms of like our repos, so the the zk simd that um, uh, that I talked about, so that will be open source pretty soon under the MIT license. But um, our GNARK based Plunket2 verifier that is already open source and also under an MIT license. Um, and we you know we are very open for collaborators on these and and also users. So, um, so yeah, so reach out if you um, if any of you have any questions about them. Does anyone have any questions for Kevin? Hello, um, thank you. I was more wondering about the point of aggregating all these different consensus. Is it like to have some atomicity across the main? Oh, no, it's purely, um, I mean, I think that that's a kind of interesting point, but it's, this is purely for like cost savings, right? So, okay. um, you know, we'll aggregate like, let's say, you know, n different proofs into one, right? And then, you know, when you verify, right, it'll be, it'll be cheaper. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the plan, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any more? For any more? <laughs>